In human history, only one disease has been completely eradicated, that being smallpox. Well, apart from two samples that still exist in two laboratories in the US and Russia. We are, however, incredibly close to eradicating a second, polio. Polio is a disease that will tend to affect children under 5 years old and is capable of resulting in a patient being paralysed for life. To date, there is no cure for polio. It can only be prevented through vaccinations. The vaccinations have been able to reduce cases to just 6 in 2021. In today's video, we will cover just what polio is, the history of trying to understand it, and just how it will soon be made a disease of the past. Polio is caused by the aptly named polio virus, of which there are three distinct types. Though all three types produce the same effect. Polio favours transmission in unsanitary conditions, often transmitting through infected faecal particles. Though usually, polio spreads through consumption of infected water or food. In some instances, infected saliva entering a person's mouth can also cause infection, though this is less common. Those most at risk of infection, as well as those who are more prone to a serious case, are those who are malnourished, have an immune deficiency, or women who are pregnant. It is important to note that polio is capable of crossing the maternal-fetal barrier during pregnancy, though the fetus is not affected by either maternal infection. In fact, it would appear that the maternal antibodies can be passed through the placenta, providing a level of immunity for the child's first few months. Once a person is infected, the incubation period will usually be between 6 and 20 days. In just under 3 quarters of cases, a patient will present no symptoms, whilst just under a quarter of cases will display only mild symptoms. For the mild cases, a person will present symptoms such as high temperature, fatigue and muscle pains. Most people will recover and movement will slowly come back over the next few weeks. It is in the last 1% of cases where the real danger lies. The polio virus is more than capable of affecting the spinal cord, leading to many of the symptoms associated with the disease. Muscles will weaken, becoming floppy and uncontrollable, with a person often experiencing a pins and needles-like sensation in their legs. In some instances, polio will cause meningitis, where the membrane around the brain and spinal cord become inflamed. In the most severe of cases, a person will become paralysed in what is known as acute flaccid paralysis. The parts of the body most affected are the legs, but in some instances will involve the muscles of the head, neck and diaphragm. For those who develop paralysis, anywhere up to 10% will die when the paralysis affects the muscles required for breathing. Other symptoms can include encephalitis, that is an infection and inflammation of the brain tissue. This in turn can lead to confusion, fever and even seizures. The virus targets the receptors found on the patient's neurons. It is through this process that a person will start to lose control and function of their muscles, ultimately resulting in paralysis. This, however, may not be the end of the matter. Some people will develop post-polio syndrome, which can affect people some 15 to 40 years after contracting the illness. Post-polio syndrome is where some of the symptoms reoccur or may even get worse. The symptoms include constant fatigue, muscle weakness, and muscle and joint pain. Post-polio syndrome is not too well understood. It is not known just how many are affected, nor is it clear what causes the condition. One leading theory is that the syndrome comes about from neurons previously damaged by the polio vaccines further deteriorating which would explain how it can take years of their use to become damaged to the point of post-polio syndrome taking hold. It is believed that polio has affected humanity for thousands of years. The earliest depiction of polio was found on an ancient Egyptian stone slab. The priest is shown to have a withered leg and is using a walking stick, understood to be the result of polio. 
Ancient Egyptian art tended to show little variation in how it depicted people, with very little in the way of individuality, highlighting the likelihood that this was not an artistic choice, and was rather an accurate representation of the priest. However, there are only sporadic occurrences of the disease until the last 300 years or so. The doctor first known to have identified the disease was Michael Underwood, an early proponent of paediatrics as its own distinct branch of medicine. In 1789, Underwood published the first clear description of polio in infants in his medical textbook. During the early 1800s, isolated epidemics began to be reported in medical texts, with a steady increase in the number of children becoming paralysed by the disease. But in an odd set of circumstances, improvements in hygiene in the industrialised cities played a role in polio cases becoming more severe. It has been postulated that very young children were often exposed to polio and contracted only mild symptoms, all the while developing an immunity to the disease. During times where there was little in the way of proper sewers or hygiene practices, such infections of the very young were commonplace. But as hygiene improved, the incredibly high instances of the very young being exposed to polio was reduced. Before long, fewer and fewer people developed an immunity to polio, resulting in a delayed exposure to the disease until later on in childhood or even in adult life, when the disease is more likely to take the paralytic form. It was in 1905 that Swedish physician Ivar Wickman built upon our understanding of polio. He studied the epidemic that affected Sweden in 1905, making some key observations. He observed that polio seemed to spread through physical contact, that it spread along streets and railway lines, and postulated that many of the infections took place in schools. Wickman asserted that polio was a very contagious disease, and that the severity of the symptoms vary from person to person. Crucially, he suggested that both the severe and less severe cases ought to be regarded as equal, as he correctly believed that those with the mild symptoms could spread the disease to the healthy, who in turn may contract paralytic symptoms. By the turn of the 1900s, numerous attempts had been made to discover a cure for polio. Some of the treatments suggested during the 1916 epidemic in New York that claimed over 2,000 lives included giving children radium water, bathing them in almond meal, and to give oxygen through lower extremities by positive electricity. But perhaps the most infamous of the polio treatments was the iron lung. The iron lung was invented by Philip Drinker, Louis Shaw, and James Wilson. The patient is encased within the iron lung, and the machine works by changing the pressure inside. When the pressure is lowered, the chest cavity expands, and when the pressure is raised, the chest cavity contracts. This process in essence does the breathing of the paralytic patient who would be otherwise incapable of breathing by themselves. Though inefficient, the iron lung was able to save many. It was a large piece of machinery with an even larger price tag. What's more, patients would need to be encased within the iron lung often for months or years at a time. In some instances, patients would have to remain within the iron lung for life. It was in the 1930s that the first viable polio vaccine was developed. Maurice Brody developed an inactivated vaccine where the spinal cords of infected monkeys were ground up and treated with formaldehyde, killing the virus. Early testing of the vaccines seemed promising, but when three children developed paralytic polio following receiving the vaccine, Brody's vaccine was withdrawn. It would be a further 20 years for any further breakthrough in a vaccine. In 1952, Jonas Salk and his team at the Pittsburgh University developed their polio vaccine. The Salk vaccine was tested and shown to be effective against all three types of the virus. Whilst it was around 70% effective against polio virus type 1, also known as PV1, it was well over 90% effective against PV2 and PV3. This vaccine built upon Brody's work using an inactive virus that had been treated with formaldehyde before being injected. 
This would not be the only effective polio vaccine developed around this time. Albert Sabin believed a live virus vaccine would be more effective. Sabin had previously developed vaccines for sleeping sickness, sandfly fever, and dengue fever. Sabin's research on the polio virus showed that the virus was capable of reproducing in the intestines before it attacked the nervous system. This suggested that the virus could be cultivated in tissues other than brain tissue, allowing for simpler and cheaper methods of vaccine development. Sabin would go on to develop an oral vaccine. This version would use a strain of polio virus that caused an autoimmune response, but did not seem to cause paralysis. He would first test the vaccine on himself, his family and colleagues, and it would go on to be successful in clinical trials. The vaccine was rolled out in the Soviet Union and then to the wider world. Salk's vaccine, however, did fall out of favour due to what is known as the Kutter incident. In April of 1955, the Kutter laboratory produced some 120,000 doses of the Salk vaccine under licence. But the vaccine contained live polio virus which had not been correctly inactivated. The batch of Kutter vaccines was quickly withdrawn after cases of polio were reported. Some 40,000 mild cases were reported, whilst 56 cases were seen of paralytic polio. Five children would tragically die as a result of the error, with lawsuits and investigations being lodged into what went wrong. Due to the risks, Sabin's vaccine became the favoured vaccine for much of the world. In recent years, however, advances in the production of the vaccine has resulted in a much safer inactivated polio vaccine. It is important to note that the inactivated vaccine offers better protection against paralytic polio, whilst the live vaccine is more effective when used where polio is not yet eradicated, as it is better at controlling the spread of polio and stopping outbreaks. Even to this day, some countries require a polio vaccine before travel, and many countries include the polio vaccine in the shots that children receive. It is also important to note that immunity against one of the three strains of the polio virus does not confer immunity to the other two. Therefore, vaccines were produced to combat each of the strains. By 1999, the second variant of the polio virus was eradicated, with the third variant following suit in 2012. Today, there are only two countries where polio is endemic, Afghanistan and Pakistan. This is in part due to a belief that the polio vaccine is a ploy to sterilise Muslims. One point of contention was for the hunt for Osama bin Laden. A polio vaccine rollout was used as a cover for the operation. Despite many of the Muslim leaders in these regions promoting the safety of the vaccine, there are still some who are sceptical, meaning the virus will remain endemic. A number of people throughout history have also been affected by polio. Notably filmmaker Francis Ford Coppola, musician Neil Young, and United States President Franklin D. Roosevelt, though the latter is disputed. Roosevelt was diagnosed with polio in 1921, and it is understood that his drive to find treatments, cures, and a vaccine played a key role in the development of the vaccines. However, retrospective analysis of his symptoms point to Guillain-Barre syndrome. Regardless, Roosevelt did found the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis, which was largely responsible for the development of the vaccines. Whilst polio is soon to be a thing of the past, it has left its mark on many. The lifelong damage it can cause, particularly affecting children, is truly disturbing. The defeat of the polio virus is another testament to the success of the vaccine programs that have saved many. Although it is important to remember that the virus can still be detected in countries where it has long since been eliminated. In June of 2022, the polio virus was detected in the sewage network of North and East London. The United Kingdom is considered by the World Health Organization to be polio free with low risk for polio transmission due to the high level of vaccination across the population. And thankfully, this is the case for much of the world. And no doubt polio will be the second disease to be eliminated from the world, hopefully in our lifetimes. <laughs>